In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I built my son's crib, and I do have plans available if you'd like to help support the channel and maybe build it yourself. It's a race against the clock to get this video done, so let's just get right into it. I'm building this to match the dresser from my last video. So just like that, I started by milling up some rough sawn white oak, first by breaking it down into more manageable pieces on the miter saw. Then I flattened one face and squared up an edge on the joiner. If you have any questions on the rough lumber milling process, be sure to check out my channel where I have an in-depth video explaining every step. Of course, buying lumber pre-milled is always an option as well. After the joiner, I ran the flattened side face down through the planer to make the opposing face co-planer and down to my final thickness. Then I ripped all the pieces to their final width on the table saw and cut down to their final length on the miter saw. With all my pieces ready to go, the first thing I did was get the four legs glued up. Since I couldn't find material thick enough, I simply glued two pieces together to get the thickness I wanted, just clamping them all up together at the same time to conserve my clamps. With the legs set aside to dry, next I started working on the headboard or back panel, whatever you want to call it. I originally planned on having three center styles here, but with four I was able to just use one wide board for the panels rather than having to glue pieces together to make them wider, so that's what I went with. For the joinery on the panel, it's essentially like just one big cabinet door and I use this Freud shaker style router bit set that creates the beveled edge along the inside edge. I first ran all the edges through creating the groove. The top and bottom and two outside styles only have the groove on the inside edge. And then the four center styles have the groove on both sides. With that bit still in the router, I went ahead and just lowered it to create the rabbit on all four sides of the center panels to create the tongue that slides in those previously made grooves. As soon as the panels were done, I went ahead and got them sanded and applied the Rubio Monaco natural finish to them to give them time to dry. You always want to pre-finish solid wood panels, especially because right now it's the most humid time of year here, and without a doubt these pieces are going to shrink this winter. And when they do, you would see the unfinished edge if I didn't finish them before putting them into the rails and styles. This is only my second project now using Rubio, but I sure am loving it. You only have to sand to 120 grit, so that saves a lot of time, and you just spread or wipe the finish on and buff it in with a white scotch bright pad. Then after a couple minutes, wipe off all the excess with a towel. Now that the panels were set aside to dry, I could finish up on the router by cutting the tongues on both ends of all the vertical styles. You don't need a coping sled like this. Most of the videos on my channel I'm not using one, but it sure does make things a little easier and this is just a cheap one I got off Amazon, but it works really great. To assemble, I went through and marked the center of each style and then marked where they needed to be on the rails to make sure everything was even and square while gluing up. And speaking of gluing up, all I had to do was add glue to the tongues on the styles and get them slid into the rails. Notice I'm not gluing the panel so that they can expand and contract. On something like cabinet doors, I'll use what's called space balls that you put in the groove to take up some of the slop in the panel, but still allow it to move. On something like this that's just going to be sitting there, I don't really find it necessary. I just make sure the tongues on the panel are a tight, but not too tight fit, so they can move, but they aren't just super loose. Another option is to just use a small amount of glue on the center of the panel and then it can still move outwards from there. After the panel dried I could get it taken out of clamps along with the legs and work on getting them joined together after squaring up and cutting the legs to final length. I normally just ease the edges in a lot of my projects with sandpaper, but on something like this I really wanted to make sure all the edges were nice and smooth to prevent splintering. So on the exposed edges on the entire crib I used a 16th inch Freud roundover bit, doing each piece where necessary before assembly. The 16th inch bit is perfect to still give it that square look, but still be safe and smooth. To join the back legs to the panel I used dowels, which you'll see is a common theme in this build. I just marked center on the legs and then measured out where to drill the holes. 
I then like to take an awl and make an indent right on my mark. The rest of the project can basically just be built with a drill and a simple drilling block to make sure I'm drilling straight. By using a bread point drill bit, I just put the tip right in the indent I made with the awl and get the hole drilled. Then I just use the same measurements to drill the same holes on the edge of the back panel. A quick dry fit to make sure everything is fitting as it should, and it is. Which brings up a great point. Largely I'm just using a cheap Milwaukee tape measure and a drill on this project. And if you just take your time and make sure your layout and measurements are on point, everything works out as it should. Before gluing the legs to the panel, I first went ahead and drilled the holes I need to attach the side panels as well. The center two holes are just for dowel alignment pins, and then the top and bottom holes are through holes for quarter inch bolts. On the back side to recess the bolt heads a bit, I first used a Forstner bit. And then I had a quarter inch bit set up in the drill press, so I used that to drill all the way through the leg. This was a pretty tight fit for the bolt, so off camera I actually went through with a 5 16th inch bit to make all the bolt holes slightly bigger to make putting it together easier. To get the legs glued on I had to break out these Bessie clamp extenders. I don't use them often but they definitely come in handy on bigger projects like this to join two clamps together. It's also a reason I really like pipe clamps. I just take the heads off a smaller clamp that I use more often and then I have a couple pieces of long pipe on hand that I can simply swap the heads over to. Just using something like ratchet straps is a good option on larger things like this too and certainly cheaper than clamps. Then it was just a matter of adding glue and dowels and getting the legs clamped on. Next up I could start working on the front and two side panels, which would just be all slats inside a thicker frame. When designing the crib I experimented with several ways to make these, like traditional mortise and tenon and I tried a couple different ways to make them, but for me the most efficient option I found by far was using dowels. Something like a festival domino I think would be best for a project like this, but I'm still making do without one. To make the process even more efficient and most importantly accurate for drilling the dowel holes and the ends of all the slats, I decided to make my own custom drilling block. I just used some 3 quarter inch scrap MDF pieces to wrap tight around the slats and then glued on a top piece. After laying out and drilling where the holes needed to be, I decided to add these bushing sleeves, just like what's in a store bought dowel jig. Since I had like a hundred holes to drill, these would keep the holes accurate and durable. And they were only a few cents, so I thought it was a great idea and it worked awesome. Then what I thought was going to be a very time consuming process literally only took minutes to get all the holes drilled in both ends of all the slats. On the two outside pieces, since they're thicker and wider, I used bigger dowels. I didn't take the time to make a drilling block for these since there was only a handful to do. I just marked out where they needed to be and I got them drilled with my regular jig. On all the slats, since they would be seeing the little fingers all over them the most, I went with a little bit bigger 1 8 inch roundover bit set up in the router to make it a bit safer and faster. To ease a lot of stress trying to glue all these up, I did it in two stages. First gluing the dowels in to both ends of all the slats so that they were ready to go. I just had to make sure I wiped off any excess glue squeeze out from the dowels that would prevent them from going into the rails fully. Now 
While giving the glue some time to dry on those, I then went through and got all the mating holes drilled in the rails. The hardest part of this build by far was actually just designing it since there are certain safety regulations you have to follow, how the spacing and sizing affects everything, and trying to make the sides the exact same as the front was quite a headache. Sure, I could have copied a store bought design and made it easy, but what's the point in fun in that? But I do have a ton of time in making these plans, so definitely check them out if you're interested. For the rails, since I could of course lay them down on the drill press, unlike the slats, I used that with my fence set up, and again the process went way faster than I was thinking it would. Before final sanding everything, I went through with some black Starbond CA glue to fill any imperfections and knots. I really like how this looks with white oak after finishing. On something like this where both the inside and outside are visible, it's really hard to avoid imperfections without wasting a bunch of wood and money. Now it was time for the glue up. I decided to use some tight bond extend glue to give myself a bit more assembly time, and using one of these little glue bots helped make it easier and faster too. Even doing some practice pieces to determine the best amount of glue to add to prevent a ton of squeeze out really helps eliminate a ton of tedious cleanup time later. At this point really all I could do was go ahead and get the front legs prepped. The front legs would be joined permanently to the side panels with dowels and then have the through bolts to connect to the front panel as well. For the through holes I found it more accurate to drill halfway through and then flip the piece over to finish drilling from the other side. Maybe I just don't have the best drill bits, but on smaller ones like this quarter inch, I found it wanders too much and isn't straight through on thicker stock like this. So doing it this way made it perfect. One more thing I could get done at this point was adding the top cap to the back panel with, you guessed it, more dowels. I evenly spaced the dowels by eye, but they didn't need to be in any precise location because I used these dowel center points to mark where they needed a made up on the panel. You can see they just leave an indent right where you need a drill to make the holes line up perfect. Now that all the panels were dry, I could finish up drilling the holes on the ends. The threaded inserts I used called for a 3 8 inch hole, so I could simply use the same bit and drill those at the same time I drilled the center dowel alignment pin holes. These holes here on the inside of both side panels were also for threaded inserts for adjustable mattress heights. I couldn't find any height regulations for these online, so I did just use my daughter's store-bought crib as a reference to be safe and made them the same. The reason for attaching the legs to the side panels is so that it can act as a convertible crib just like you would buy. And when we don't need the front panel anymore, we can remove it to be a day bed, and of course the legs will still be there attached to the sides. Here I'm adding all the threaded inserts, and I found I couldn't set the ones I had perfectly flush, so I just took a larger drill bit to start widening the hole, then I put the drill in reverse to clean it up. I used some CA glue, which helps lubricate it as you tap into this hardwood, and then of course it dries to help keep it from working back out. Okay. 
Finally, it was time to put it together and make sure everything was the right size. Man, wouldn't that stink at this point if not? Not tightening these back bolts completely at first makes it a lot easier for the sides to be able to flex out and add the front panel. Then they could all be tightened and man this thing sure is solid. Now for the mattress frame. You could make your own out of metal or just a simple wood frame with slats and it'd be fine. But it is nice to have the spring, so I was looking into just buying one. Then I checked Facebook Marketplace for old cribs, and that's definitely what I recommend. I live in a small town, and there was still a ton available, and I was able to get this one for only 20 bucks, which was just a no-brainer in my opinion in terms of time, money, and actual use benefits. Believe it or not, right at the time I was looking for one, someone threw one in the metal recycling at my dad's work too, so I got that one for free and had two to choose from, so they're pretty easy to find. Putting the mattress in to check the fit and it turned out just absolutely perfectly snug, which is super important safety wise. The last step of the build was adding the top caps on the sides and front panel. I'm sure you guys are tired of watching me drill holes, so quickly I just attached them the same way as the back piece using the dowel center points as reference. Adding these while having the crib assembled together definitely helped make sure the joints were nice and tight, even though they're not actually attached to each other. Before adding the finish, I figured I'd go ahead and remove the front panel and do a little strength test. It should hold a baby just fine. To finish I first laid the pieces down on my table and applied the Rubio to the inside faces of all the panels and all the edges and nooks and crannies while it was laying there and easiest to do. Then I just put the pieces together and all I had left was to go around and do the outside faces. Just like the dresser I absolutely love how this Rubio Monaco natural looks on white oak. I know people say it all the time, but the video really doesn't do it justice at all, at least with my poor technical video skills, compared to how great it looks in person. If you missed the video where I completely remodeled his room down to the studs and then did this accent wall, be sure to check that out, along with the dresser video too if you haven't already. Well, we made our deadline, barely, and baby brother isn't here yet, but big sister thinks it's pretty cool, right? Uh-huh. Cool. All right, tell everyone thanks for watching. You can't say thanks for watching? Close enough. All right, take care, everyone.